another episode of Friends of MariaDB. I'm uh, Kai Harner, CEO of the MariaDB Foundation, and this is the December 2021 edition of the server Minifest. And with me here, I have Eric Kurman, our chair, I have Monty, our founder, and I have Vicenzo Turbaro. How would you present yourself? So I am Vicenzo Turbaro and I am a team lead software developer at MariaDB Foundation. So what we will do is we will watch the same videos as you and then we will press stop and come with a com number of comments about this and ho I hope the comments will be relevant for you as well. Let's start. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Daniel Black. I'm here with uh, Rick James, who's been a, a long time uh, MySQL helper on uh, Stack Overflow and DB Stack Exchange and has been around for quite a while. Uh, Semi retired now, but um, has previously worked for Yahoo, um, where he developed lots of skills in hitting it, solving problems. Probably should have rehearsed that more. <laughs> cool. So, Rick, I've invited you today to um, talk about your experience and, and what you see is sort of happening in the, the user community and um, how MariaDB is, is helping or not helping, as the case may be, um, users' needs. So I um, want to sort of talk about, I, I mean, we've seen over the years um, numerous uh, users on uh, DBA Exchange and Stack Exchange getting in trouble. So what are the, the normal beginner SQL user troubles that happen? Well, the beginners tend to not necessarily even know what an index is. Once we get past that hurdle, which of course is pretty basic, uh, then they start indexing every column, which <laughs> is a waste. And they haven't discovered composite indexes. That's where you have two columns, and that helps with certain types of queries. And then they, um, they think they know all about indices, and they say, why is it this query using my index? And then it gets into details of why it might not use an index, simply because it would be more efficient not to bother with the index. You're, you're going to look at most of the rows anyway. Um, they don't necessarily put a primary key on every table, and that's sort of a no-no, especially with NODB. They sometimes don't realize that the primary key is unique and it is an index. So they add another index or another unique on the same column. Minor waste, not nothing serious. Sometimes they ask, well, Shouldn't this be a hash index? Why, why is it just B trees? Well, B trees are as good as hashes, and they are even better in some situations. Yeah, you're right, please. Yeah. Okay, so Rick is totally right regarding hash index. They are really good in memory, but usually really, really poor in disk. Uh, and uh, the organization of dynamic hashing is really, really bad at this. Um, they look at the CPU and say, oh my goodness, uh, the CPU is pegged. What's going on? It's usually a poor query that needs either a better index or maybe rewriting the query to do it a different way. Um, <clears throat> they uh, reach for buying new hardware. And if I get hold of them, I say, no, no, let's try to uh, speed up the program, speed up the queries. And usually there is a way to speed up the queries. I rarely see a production system with, uh, certainly not with all CPUs running full tilt. Often it's less than one CPU's worth and it's doing just fine and doing as much as they want. So uh, as Rick points, uh, pointed out is that uh, uh, you should see if you get the performance issue, what's the problem, is it disk or CPU? If your disk is, CPU is not running at full speed, there's usually ways to tune, tune things. No, and, and I think the uh, larger thing he was indicating there was that uh, immediately reaching for new hardware is seldom going to be as good of an answer as first investigating 
what is the cause and looking for your bottlenecks and find out uh, if you can address it, not with new hardware, but simply by writing the query in a different way. And I've run into that plenty of times because the first way we write the query is just to get the job done. And we may not even revisit that query for years until we, our data has expanded enough that now the poor performance of that query is starting to be visible in our application. And that's, that's a great time to then look at what query we're actually generating and see if we can generate it differently. Oh, and a, and a great way to find, figure out which queries are slow is to enable the slow query log. Slow query log, yeah. Have a look. Usually fixing the top 10 there will make your site, website go just much faster. I'm pretty sure that Rick will comment on that soon. Uh, I guess the, the way uh, a lot of um, queries are framed is like, help me tune my way out of this problem <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, as well. The, uh, the Finding the worst query, you, you need to fi use the slow log. That's one way to do it, unless you can analyze the program otherwise. And the slow log, which uh, especially like the PT Query Digest for summarizing what you can get from the slow log. It essentially points to the worst query and the next few bad ones. And sometimes uh, fixing that will fix all of your CPU problems. Okay. I had one example of a, um, a machine that was pegged at 100% CPU. I found the slow log, found that there was a uh, simple uh, query that was asking, is the date uh, equal to this? And it had date of the column equal to a constant. So the couldn't use the index on the date column. In other words, it wasn't sargeable. S-A-R-G-A-B-L-E. That's a word that I learned over the time that, uh, that discusses why, uh, what, what kinds of queries, what kinds of where clauses do not use indices because you've got an indexed column hiding inside a function. Okay. This is a common mistake by many people. Okay. So if we go back to, you know, what should, you know, beginner users do to um, uh, prepare themselves for, for writing in SQL? Well, most people don't really do much or, for that matter, need much. I mean, they, they, they can uh, pretty quickly learn what a select looks like and write one. The, one of the hurdles to get past is not programming procedure-wise. In most languages, you do step, 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 but with SQL, you're doing, you're applying some action to an entire table of rows. Uh, SQL can do that quite efficiently. Learning to do that makes things a lot faster and less code to write. Yeah. And, and people getting over the hurdle of, oh, okay, I'll just write a loop and then do SQL inside of loop. Um, I Loops, guess the cursors, other those things are, are essentially no-nos. Yep. Uh, okay, so it's just tend to be slow. So, so it's just I, I guess users on, on their the SQL journey is um, hitting a problem and just getting over it in a, a rather predefined way. Cool. And my okay. um, is very easy to, to get started with, so um, you can do it yourself on that. your own machine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess the intermediate users and, and, you know, what happens after a while that, you know, a user has got a, a, a well-defined running thing and then it just starts to fall off. What are the, the normal signs that, you know, something's starting to go wrong and what are the um, typical fixes? The typical sign is that your web page or whatever you're doing uh, takes several seconds to come up. And what I would do at that point is look at the queries and see what they're doing. 
Um, of course, it could be non SQL code that's taking forever to bring up the web page. But that's a matter of digging through the code to see what it is that's taking the time. Okay. So one of the things that people often get wrong, especially when they're using an ORM, is that they accidentally do, instead of one query to get all the data, they do um, multiple queries, like for a for loop that, let's say it looks through a, a user object, and that user object, every time you query a member, you hit the database. And you, this way you end up having, let's say, 100 queries to just load a single web page. And that will not show up in the query log, the slow query log, because the queries are fast. Mm -hmm. It's just that there's so many of them, and you're paying the round trip between the application and the database layer. So that's one of the key areas I have found that people get wrong. And it's rather easy to get it wrong and not know that you've got, gotten it wrong. And, and so uh, I imagine that when you're helping someone through that, that the first thing you do is start to ask, what can we profile, how can we measure? Exactly. And one thing I like to do is I start up uh, my top and I just look at the QPS counter. And if I click on a page and I see the QPS just showed up, then that's definitely something we need to look at. Queries per seconds. Yep. Okay. Um, so it, it often, I guess, comes to back to something fairly basic like lack of an index, your data so size has grown. Um, some data, the data has, has grown. grown, different yep. query plans got used, may not be the right one. Yeah. OK. Yep. So it's yeah, showing the same sort of problems. A basic tool is explained to tell you what the query plan is, but unfortunately, it doesn't tell you what to do when it's not a good query plan. OK. And I don't have a good solution for that. Nowadays, you have optimizer trace that tells you the options that the optimizer has. <coughs> From there, you can see uh, why what's choose and why, and you can usually figure out why not. How do you turn it on? Just set the optimizer trace variable to on. There's documentation in the knowledge base. Should maybe the explain output sort of uh, go to a link to say, you know, solve this? <laughs> um. What I do at this point is I take a, an S, uh, a select statement and I can see what indexes are needed or how to rewrite it. I've gotten to that point, but it took me more than a decade. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so keep with it and, and you'll, you'll be perfect at it. <laughs> yep, keep with it. Okay, that's a good start. Um, I had a, um, another presenter talking about uh, database. Um, oh, sorry. Let's start with um, DBAs and sysadmin and DevSops. Is do you see there actually an, a DevOps role, or, or do people try to keep in development or sysadmin? Since uh, MariaDB is simple enough a typical programmer can be the DBA, the sysadmin, everything all rolled in one. And when I was working for big companies, that was, I mean, th there was a clear divide between the programmer and the DBAs. And that was perhaps partially because places like Oracle essentially needed that. There was that much difference between writing code and maintaining the system. Uh, but with MariaDB, there's not that much uh, need for a DBA. So, Certainly when you get to, to a big uh, setup. So the continued help. focus on like ease of use and um, default tunings that are right um, have made it almost more accessible that way compared to Oracle? Well, one thing to note there is that the uh, the default settings of when you load this, uh, the database engine have been reasonably tuned. A decade ago, they were pretty bad, and certain things had to be fixed before you could get to square two. <laughs> now, uh, the defaults are mostly in good shape. 
I'm sure someone wants to comment here. I think there's room for improvement, but uh, but but indeed, I think it's important that we get the defaults right and continue to improve those and revisit those over time. The problem with the defaults is that most of our users are using desktop, and the defaults are for the desktop. Mm -hmm. So and that's uh, that makes it hard for her to have a uh, really good defaults. So the plan is to within the next few releases is that uh, uh, we will have a, an auto setting. And then you just said auto, and auto means that uh, this whole computer is just for you. Mm -hmm. Just to use all, every, everything you can to get maximum performance. And that's the solve it. So, so uh, some self-tuning at runtime? No, self-tuning at startup time. At setup time, okay. For, for defaults. Okay. And it's only when you get into a serious programming with serious problems that you may need help saying, okay, how can I better tune this setup for this type of application? Okay. Yep. Um, so, you know, the, there's MySQL tuner that's been around for a while. Is there um, any other, you know, usual resolution mechanisms that um, uh, people should attempt or just ask? <laughs> Um, there aren't a lot that you can necessarily immediately learn to do yourself. Uh, I'll probably bring up a few as we go along. I haven't specifically isolated that. Getting the index right is the biggest thing for performance, and that's not trivial. Okay. So, yeah, getting expert help, um, you know, is a... Uh, Good time saver. <laughs> yep. It can be. Yep. Okay. Um, we've seen over you know the last ten years that database containers and Kubernetes is is taking off. Uh, how mature is this um, on the database side? The database is quite mature. The things around it. Well, for building web pages, for example, there are something like a hundred third-party pro products that try to abstract the database. And they irritate me in that now you have to learn the abstraction. And then when things go wrong, you have to learn SQL as well. So you're having to learn twice as much than if you just did it yourself. Okay, right. I would say abstractions are good if you don't know which data you will use because that actually hides the database. So you can easily move from one to the other one. But otherwise, I agree with Rick. <laughs> yeah, well, I, my, my notion is that, uh, that if you're using an object relational mapper, that, uh, that Rick is entirely right, that at some point you begin to, in order to tune that relational mapper, either start writing SQL directly or you have to really learn uh, the details of that ORM. And I think that the that many developers are um, hesitant to learn straight SQL, and, and so they end up going down the ORM tuning path. And that's a fine thing to gain mastery in as well, but really uh, uh, you will do yourself a great service uh, to gain some proficiency in writing the SQL directly. And the other extreme is the no SQL direction is you have to reinvent a SQL. <laughs> I'm exaggerating a bit, but oh, you need an I index? Okay, one. figure out how to write one. <laughs> I won't loosely define types, but now I've got to write all the type checking in the code. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Yeah, type checking. Haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, another common thing from there. Okay. Um, so um, on, I guess, an ecosystem point of view, there's, I guess, MariaDB provides, I guess, a server, but a lot of the tools that and and frameworks that people develop are, are outside of MariaDB and just occurring in their, their own way. Um, 
and you both, mentioned before uh, there's like some disconnect. Um, so what would your a view of, of a, an ideal ecosystem look like? An ideal ecosystem, a machine of my own. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Bracona toolkit is very handy. MariaDB has a bunch of tools too, and uh, some of them are at a price. Some of them come free. Um, I tend to use, for my own purposes, Apache, PHP, MySQL. Well, any flavor of MySQL, including MariaDB. Okay. So, I mean, I mean PHP, you know, ex exposes SQL pretty much in a, a raw form, which um, sort of saves you from, you know, jumping between the, the framework and the um, and, and SQL. Or do you use some kind of PHP um, ORM? Or I write helper? SQL. Yep. I, I, I don't have anybody generating SQL. 20 years yep. ago, I said, hmm, I'm doing a lot of uh, SQL in various um, flavors. I should write something, a front end to this. And then I looked at the details. Hmm, let's see, that has limit, that doesn't have limit. This has this syntax, that has that syntax. Forget it. <laughs> I better just write it myself. So if that comes and back to it, the um, original um question before that you know maybe an ideal ecosystem is uh such that uh, a close eye is you know kept on um these orms and ensuring that they have all the the syntax and the features that the underlying server has As... uh, who's going to do all that work <laughs> there, there is that <laughs> well, i mean yeah. just recently with cte uh over new syntax totally different syntax how about the uh sequence table in uh, mariadb that i love give me a sequence of one to ten or can then convert that to dates how to get a table of dates i love that one but anyway <clears throat> yeah okay so yeah there's, there's a lot of gaps there <laughs> well yeah Glad you like that one. I, I like it too. I'll pass it on to Sergey. <laughs> yep. Okay. There are two kinds of sequences in uh, MariaDB. One is the one that Rick is talking about, that Jeff can generate the sequence of number between any two numbers. And then we have the uh, ANSI SQL sequence that allows you to uh, generate uh, um, numbers uh, incrementing for the previous use that could be used by another thread. For example, for uh, replacing auto increment uh, in for primary keys. So, um, what what do you see um, being developed in um, MariaDB to account for user needs in the near future? Is, is there account gaps for user needs? Hmm? Are user needs changing? Not a lot. Uh, there are still data warehouses at the big end. There are still WordPress-like things at, um, for blogging. Uh, there are still um, hmm. no. I, I don't. Huh. There's transaction. Sure, lots of transactional stuff. It's been amazingly stable for a large number of years, but the only difference is we're now talking terabytes instead of gigabytes. And before that, we were talking megabytes. Okay, so, so the, the scaling also means that, you know, we've got more storage and we've got slightly, um, you know, more processes kind of available as things go by too. Multiple cores is a waste. MariaDB yeah. does not need multiple cores. It Well, it needs a few, but not many. Uh, the typical machine has far more cores than you need, unless you've got some sloppy queries. Uh, with SSDs, uh, IO has suddenly become a lot better, a lot faster. Uh, 
things like sharding are still challenging and you're on your own for doing sharding. Um, but not many people do sharding. Uh, massive ingestion of uh, stuff like uh, I encounter people who are tracking a number of vehicles. Uh, sensors on vehicles send in information every 10 seconds or whatever. They're recording that in a database and then digesting it or something. Uh, Sensor-like stuff is always a big challenge. Uh, and it tends to be something that you can't do it your, do yourself. You need big machine, big thinking of how to do the, how to digest the data, et cetera. That's on the big end of things. There's still a lot of stuff on the little end. I mean, writing a blog, how difficult is that? <laughs> true, true. Remember, when you talk about digesting a data, that's something you can do in parallel on many machines. That's not really a problem. It's more about combining those and get those into some form that you can easily uh, process in real time for user queries. That's the challenge. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, the, we're the hard part is thinking what to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly, you know, write a, um, a few blogs and, and articles yourself. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Now, what I try to do is aim at uh, what you need to do, not what you can do. A reference manual says what you can do. But should I? Is that the best way to do it? Which way should I? Uh, blah, blah. So I try to say, okay, for this task, go that direction. Okay. Um, okay, in conclusion, um, do you what areas do you think MariaDB should um, improve? Um, there are, well, let me see, I have a list here of. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Lay it on. <laughs> uh, windowing, windowing functions need better performance. Um, There are, there's, people try to do, give me some, uh, a few random rows. There's no clean way to do that. Groupwise max is another thing that is better done with some, to, some technique in the engine rather than kludgy ways by the user. Uh, <clears throat> a materialized view would help with uh, data warehousing. Analytics. You've yep. reached into some degree of uh, data typing, such as the UUID, uh, JSON. There's the possibility of IP addresses being a data type. There is. It's on yeah. Coinet 6. If it is. A, yeah. a lot of people want to turn a table sideways. Uh, True. That's doable, but it's tedious. And I think there is a standard syntax that does that. So what the heck? Trying to do it. Uh, the performance schema is there, but it's so gnarly that uh, it needs a better wrapper around it. That's true. But isn't sys, um, what's the name of it? Sys, sys, sys schema. Sys schema, isn't that a wrapper around? That's a little bit more manageable. It, it is a little bit more manageable. Um, I, I, I still have uh, a desire to see some improvement. Submit the pull request. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, did you, some sargeable test, like the one I mentioned with date, could be optimized in the optimizer rather than forcing the user to rewrite his query to get some speed. Yep. Uh, a lot of novices come in with, and use left join everywhere, not realizing they're really doing an inner join half the time. And when I try to read their code, okay, is this really a left join or not? So some detection of you're added a, a where clause on, on the right side. Yeah. So therefore it can just forget that left is there. 
I haven't looked to see if Explain Extended actually does that for us, but anyway. Yeah, uh, there's no optimization for OR. Practically none anyway. That OR is much less often used in a WHERE clause compared to AND, uh, but there's essentially no way for the engine to do the work. So um, when it comes to OR optimization, we do perfect OR optimizations when there are common stunts. Uh, but uh, we do, uh, currently we don't use if you say that uh, uh, field A is e equal to field B or A is equal to or C. That we don't do. But if everything constant, they work. I often tell people to turn it into a union, and that's a bit tricky. Yeah, comes a, a bit bloated. I guess with CTEs, that can be a little bit simpler, but it, it's... Well, the CTE no. itself is a bit complex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets it down to a single reference, but whether it's optimized. Yeah. Okay. Cool. In fact, CTEs are pretty much just like a sub queries in the from class. There's no difference between them than the underlying implementation. No. But I think the, all of his uh, suggestions about things that could use work were legitimate. I think those are all things that, indeed, we could see some improvement. And I look back at his first comments and those are like the basic things we've been teaching in SQL classes from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So the one disagreement I have is or implicit disagreement of something implicit because uh, uh, SQL is actually not that hard to, uh, to learn. You can learn that in the most basic stuff including optimization in one or two days. So it's not like learning Perl or Python or C where that actually takes months. I, I, for, for basic usage, absolutely. It doesn't take long to, to get up and running with the basics of what you need. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And indexes are not that complex. In, I agree. The, the only yeah. thing that you have to read, read up on, and quick table, in which cases the index are used. Mm -hmm. and, and then you know 80% of the importance. Mm -hmm. well, okay. Well, um, thank you for your insights today, and um, much appreciate the interview. And yeah. Oh, have a good day. Enjoyed it. Good.